another exciting episode of uh, Gravitalk, where I, a Graviton, invite one of my fellow superhero um, compadres to uh, invite to a review a movie with me. And today I uh, have with me a guy who I've had uh, just a couple of times before, but here is he, but here he is on his first ever uh, three Pete. Uh, 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 please welcome back to the show, um, the, the, the Chris D'Amico, the uh, Red Mist. Actually, I'm the motherfucker. And I wanted to take the high road on that, but fine, low road. You're the motherfucker. Thank you. Ugh, it's such a not an honor to be back here. No, seriously, I don't like being here. We, uh, we kind of don't like you being here either with, with your shrill voice. Well, you're going to have to deal with my shrill voice, okay? Anyway, um, so how come you're not making me review another monster movie? Oh yeah, you're kind of my monster guy, aren't you? You we reviewed we reviewed, uh, we reviewed uh, I Frankenstein, and then we reviewed uh, Count Count Dracula, and then um well not Count Dracula, Dracula Untold, and then uh we stopped. Yeah, what's the matter? No more m monster movies for me? Well, uh, we thought we would do that, but instead, um. Uh, yeah, we, we might keep doing that, even though it's weird, because, uh, you're not, that's not really your forte, because you're not that. Yeah, I'm just some geeky guy who has no arms or legs anymore, and instead I got prosthetics. Yeah, you got prosthetics. But anyway, the reason why I have you back on the program is because, um, today's movie, uh, has a lot to do with your history, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, well, aren't you going to tell the audience what it is? Well, the, the movie today is, uh, Kingsman, uh, the Secret Service. And, uh, the Kingsman's Secret Service has a lot to do with, um, has a lot to do with, uh, with, uh, with a good old motherfucker here. Because a motherfucker is from, of course, the kick-ass movies. Yeah, the kick-ass movies. The, the, I, I personally thought there was nothing wrong with the, with the second one. So where the hell is the third one? Well, I think the reason why there's no third one is because, uh, guess what? People didn't like the second one. <gasps> Blasphemy! No, it, it's true. It's true, motherfucker. It's true. Anyway, um, so the reason why we, uh, why we got you back in the program is because you have, you are associated with these people. Um, the movie is, uh, is directed by, um, Matthew Vaughn, who, uh, directed the kiss, the first kick-ass movie. And it's probably why the second one sucked, because he did not come back. Uh, and, uh, Kingsman is also, uh, written by, uh, Mark Millar, who, uh, wrote, um, who wrote Kick-Ass. So, yes, not only do you have the same, uh, director as Kick-Ass, uh, directing Kingsman, but you've also got, uh, it's also based on the same, uh, book that was from the same writer as Kick-Ass, uh, Mark Millar. So, yes, it's basically, uh, Kick-Ass, uh, Double down of, uh, this is from the creators of Kick-Ass, both in director and comic book writer. So, yes, um, and I gotta say, um, actually, now that I uh, have uh, seen this film, you know, Kingsman, uh, The Secret Service, uh, actually, um, even though I'm not, I don't agree with a uh, superhero propaganda. I do respect uh, how Kickass decided to uh, what what their specific take was going to be on that genre, and they have taken that idea, and they've basically taken that um like like Kickass is to superheroes as this new film, uh, Kingsman, is to uh, spy films from the sixties and seventies. You know, classic. Uh, cookie fun spy stuff, and they even make jokes in the movie. It's really great. Oh, and and I don't uh, view spy films as propaganda because I'm not a James Bond villain. I'm a, I'm not a spy villain. I'm a superhero villain, so it's different. Uh, whatever. Let's just get this over with, so I can get back to trying to find some scientist to regrow my arms and legs. 
Not unless you want to turn into a lizard monster. I'd prefer to be a lizard monster instead of a mad torso man. Well, too bad, torso man. So let's start the movie. Um, so Kingsman, the Secret Service, uh, that's the whole name, uh, is if it's a sequel, even though it's not, uh, starts... With, um, first it starts with the logo, uh, Marv, which I guess is the production company, of company of, uh, of Matthew, of Matthew Vaughn, I guess? Is it, it's, it's, it's a production, production company? Anyway, apparently it's not very nice to colorblind folks, because it's a whole bunch of spots and dots, and then, and then, like, certain dots are a different color, and that spells out Marv, and I'm like, hey, the colorblind people won't be able to see that, all they'll see is, all, all, all they'll see is just a bunch of polka dots that are not the same co that are all the same color. So anyway, um, then we finally get to the movie where uh, we see a helicopter and a bunch of spies and they're blowing up this uh, Middle Eastern building it looks like and as the and as pieces of the building fall off of this um, uh, fall off, uh, they form the ti the opening titles of the film and I'm like, well, how come no one's noticing that weird phenomenon happening? But anyway, so uh, we see a bunch of spies and um, apparently they are named after the Kingsmen of the Round Table. I have no idea what that is. Wait, don't you take like history mythology lessons in, in uh, high school? I slept through all of that. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Too bad. So anyway, um, so yes, these spies who were named after the classic uh, or, or uh, mythological kingsmen um, are interrogating this uh, this terrorist, but the terrorist explodes, and so does one of the kingsmen. Yes, now one of the kingsmen is dead. Let me guess. Let me guess. He is the main protagonist's father. Well, yes. Cliche! Ugh, don't be like that, um, uh, matter fucker. So anyway, yes, um, yes, uh, the main protagonist whose name is, um, is, uh, is, uh, Exy Unwin, or, or Gary Exy Unwin. Uh, well, why the fuck is he called Exy? I don't remember, but anyway, good old Exy, um, uh, it, 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 it has to be, um, greeted by, uh, by his, by, um, the, by, uh, Colin Firth, yes, Colin Firth was one of the other Kingsmen, and, you know, he has to give Exy the bad news, and this is when Exy was a little boy, and he's looking at a, uh, at a snow globe, and then, uh, and then, uh, Colin Firth is like, look, look, Exy, um, when you become smarter and less of a stupid kid, then, then here, you take this, um, take this uh, little metal thing, th this little metal, and and come back to me when you're played by when you're old enough to be played by an adult uh, actor, and then and then um and then contact me, and we will uh, start this movie. So he so he leaves. Uh, yeah, yeah, Colin Firth leaves, and then we uh and then we zoom in into the snow globe. Ah. Uh. Well, what if this turns out to end like Saint Elsewhere? Oh yeah, like like it turns out that it was all in his imagination. It was all in the snow globe. Oh no! Actually, no, I don't think that's how it ends at all. So, I mean, why would he dream up of the very adult stuff that happens in this movie? Don't give it away. Just have it happen in this actual film. Right, 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 right. So anyway, um. So cut to uh, seventeen years later. Good God, that that that's enough. That, that's enough time for a person to age enough to uh, drive. Anyway, cut to seventeen years later. Um, Luke Skywalker is an old, a, a decrepit old man, and um, he's at a cabin, and he's uh, and he's been uh, kidnapped by villains. But then the villains are 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 um, killed, yay, by this by uh, one of the king's men from. The flashback and he's all suave and sophisticated and whatnot and of course um you know he he never wants to drop his 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 uh, scotch or whatever the hell that is but then but then um but then he gets killed yes he gets killed and who does he get killed by uh, a a sexy dominatrix lady yes a a a a femme fatale lady who has knives for feet yes Good old knife foot. Knives 
foot lady. I, I don't know. The point is, yeah, I wonder if this uh, makes people with foot fetishes happy or uh, pissed because she doesn't we have real feet to show off. Just knives. Anyway, so Knife Foot Lady uh, covers up all the bodies because um, the villain of the film does not like blood. And who is the villain uh, of the film? Isn't it some guy that you've had before on the show? Yes! Well, actually, at first I thought it was. I thought it was the octopus because he's been on the program before and um, he always has these different outfits and whatnot. And I'm like, oh, hey, it's the octopus. But no, apparently it's um, it's uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Yes, uh, Samuel L. Jackson is uh, is uh, back in his villain roles. He likes to play his villains, you know, like like uh, like an Unbreakable and um and um and uh, and uh, and Django Unchained, Django. And now he's a villain in this movie too. Good, good on you, Samuel Jackson. I mean, you really pissed me off whenever you play Nick Fury in all of those Marvel films. But whenever you uh play a villain. Yay, happy! And you kept along if you feel the happiness is the truth. Stop singing! Okay, so anyway, um, so yes, Samuel L. Jackson is, um, is a villain, and, uh, he has a whole multitude of different, uh, quirks to him that make up his, uh, villain motif, you know, because, uh, this film is supposed to be a love la letter to a classic James Bond films and is also supposed to comment on them which is why um which is why uh Samuel L. Jackson or should I say Samuel L. Jackson uh, Jackson is um is following that uh, by by uh, being a, a villain of the film who has a lot of different quirks and weird things to him you know like he's this injured billionaire he has a lisp in, in case you didn't notice and uh, he can't stand the sight of blood. So, um, so yes, as, even though he's a mass murderer. Yeah, ironic, I guess. I, I don't mind blood too much. Yeah, didn't you, like, rape a girl in the comic books? Shut up, let's move along. That's really awkward. And didn't you also kill a dog? Shut up! Okay, okay, okay. So anyway, um... So back to your movie. Um, so uh, so Samuel L. Jackson uh, is there, and and he doesn't want to see the uh, Kingsman who's just been sliced in half by the knife lady, the knife foot lady, the the knife foot, the feet knives lady, and um, and he takes a really old decap decrepit um, uh, uh, Luke Skywalker away. And and this has um and, and this has uh, prompted the Kingsman Royal Secret Service to uh you know open an investigation for it and this uh secret organization includes the likes of uh, of Michael Caine and um and and Mark Strong and Colin Firth basically any famous British actor you can think of is a part of this organization of Kingsmen but they need new blood they need new uh, secret agents, which is why they are holding tryouts. By the Joker? No, not the Joker. Oh, I like the Joker. Anyway, so, so, um, so, so um, the, you would think that this would mean that Eggsy, you know, Eggsy, uh, with the metal, and now that he is played by a different actor, because, you know, it's been so long that now they casted an adult actor, unlike Boyhood, which takes such a long time, ass time, and it's like, oh, we're gonna not recast the actor, we're just gonna wait until he matures to film all of his parts. And I'm like, no, screw that, I don't have time for that bullshit. So anyway, um, so, so you would think they would, uh, you know, recruit Eggsy right away, but no, first they have to show all of his depressing backstory, that, oh, he, he, he has a stepfather, and his stepfather beats him, and, and, and they're depressing, and they live in a poor ass neighborhood, and, and, and they got bullies, and he's got a black friend and a white friend like everybody does, and, and he gets beaten by the bullies, and, and that prompts him to steal the bullies' car, and then he gets, and then he gets arrested and put into jail, and then he decides, okay, now I'm gonna call the people who gave me this medallion, even though I should have done that a long time ago. So he calls them, and he tells them the secret Password that has to do with shoes or something, and then and then and it's, it's not until then that uh, Colin first kind of finally comes to uh, recruit him. 
Yeah, but the, we had to go through all that stuff first. If that's okay, it's worth it. It's about the build-up. The build-up. And plus, when they're talking at a um, at a pub, because that's what they call uh, bars in, in British land, um, the pub, um, uh, he they, they, they show a nifty, cool fight sequence between Colin Firth and a bunch of the hoodlums who keep, you know, beating Eggsy's ass. So he so he beats all of the um, hoodlums in this cool fight sequence where you get, like, close-ups of him stabbing people and electrocuting people and stuff. And, uh, and he has, like, penguins... Um, Umbrella that uh, shields himself from bullets, and uh, and and finally we see him uh, recruit Eggsy, but um, instead of Eggsy taking it, he has to go back to his mother first because you know he's got to still show that backstory story and whatnot. Uh, I wish they could just, I wish they could just go straight to the um the spy parts instead of this stuff. It's all about the build up, motherfucker. All about the build up. So yes, um, first he uh has to be hit by his father a little bit more, and then it uh and then it turns out that um that uh that uh Colin first is able to speak to the deadbeat uh stepfather uh somehow through speakers through mysterious speakers. Oh my God, he's got omniscient powers. Or maybe he'll he's just using his um, or maybe he's just using his. Spy gear. Oh yeah, that could be a possibility. So anyway, um, so anyway, uh, so now, um, so now Eggsy decides to uh, join the uh, Secret Service. So he, um, so he, uh, so he uh, parkour parkours his way out of more uh, hoodlum uh, beating, and uh, and he finally goes over. Uh, he finally goes to um. Goes to uh, Colin Firth's uh, big old mansion where they uh, where the uh, Royal Secret Service is at. You know, if they try to be a secret or organization, um, why? Okay, here's the thing: if they're trying to be a, a secret organization, um, why are they in such plain sight? Well, maybe it's because it's a, a snooty. It looks like a snooty, snooty uh, rich person's place. So that way, no one pe people expects that uh, Secret Service is going uh, on there. Instead, they just expo instead instead they just expect uh, stuff from the movie Mordecai. Oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. Yes, yes, it does. It should always make sense. So anyway. Um, so before Eggsy gets to become one of the, uh, one of the, uh, Kingsmen of the Round Table, um, first, he must, um, per first, he must, uh, he must, uh, go through tryouts with, uh, uh, with, uh, with a whole bunch of other, um, uh, uh, cadets, a whole bunch of other potentials. And, and so it's, it's kind of like a reality show. Ooh. Yes, it's, it's like a reality show. You, you know, they, they, they have to go through uh, challenges and they have to and they have to go through uh, tests and turbulations and they get and they get um, and, and they get kicked off one by one. It's basically like a reality show, except we never see any confessions. Yeah, that they, we were missing that. So anyway, uh, they they they're the part of the reality show where they um where they meet and greet with each other. You know, um, we got a potential lover in interest for for um for Eggsy. Uh, what the fuck is her name? Uh, Roxy, uh, Roxy like a puma. How dare you make that stupid reference to something that you shouldn't be referencing? Well, excuse me for wanting to reference it. I saw it, and I, I saw the chance to reference it, and I took it. I know I probably lost my supervillain cred by doing that, but it was worth it, goddammit. It was worth it. At what cost, Graviton? At what cost? Ugh. So anyway, um, so there's Roxy, and there's a bunch of other people like um like a uh, like a uh, who 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 else who else uh, let's see here uh, uh Dean um sure why not let's go with Dean no not Dean wait what what the fuck am I talking about um I I don't know other other students that are trying to uh, also be in the Kingsman and they go through tests you know like um like the like the whole place freaking flooding and 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 you know they had to break out and and one of the students die but they never acknowledge it wow that's fucked up 
Well, the reason why it's not that fucked up is because later it's revealed that um, that she was turned out to be alive the whole time and it was just a part of the tests. Oh, why to why to spoil that here? Well, the reason why I am spoiling it uh, right now is because I'll probably forget later, and I'll get corrections like, Hey, Graviton, hey, you forgot to mention that that girl that died in that flood scene actually was still alive. How, how come Mickey Mouse is telling this to you? I have no idea. So anyway, um, so more tests include, um, them having to raise puppies. They gotta raise puppies. How the fuck long is this? Yeah, it's just like freaking two years because right before the time skip of these puppies turning into adult dogs, um, Colin Firth goes into a coma. Yes, because the head of decrepit old Luke Skywalker explodes. Yes, Luke, Luke Skywalker explodes. Because apparently, whenever people, um, Join, uh, join, uh, the, the, uh, join the, uh, legion that, uh, that, um, that Samuel L. Jackson, uh, started, uh, whenever people join him, they have to get these little chips, um, implanted into their brain, I guess to be under his, like, um, control and whatnot, which means, oh, there's one for decrepit old Luke Skywalker, there you go, right there, under your temple, and, and, but now, because of, because of, um, because, but now, because of uh, Colin Firth being on the verge of uh, getting information from him, uh, the uh, the chip activates and explodes uh, Luke Skywalker. No! No! The old decrepit Luke Skywalker. No, we were supposed to get you for Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. Ah, we'll still get him in there. This is a different universe. Oh yeah, this that that takes place in a galaxy far, far away, a long, long time ago. So anyway, um, although maybe now that it has been a long time ago, maybe the the uh, new films will be in the present. Nope, still a long time ago. So anyway, um, so 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 um so uh the explosion has caused Colin Firth to go into a coma. And, uh, and, um, and, uh, and so, uh, multiple things to tell us that, uh, this, uh, tr these training session sessions that Eggsy and Roxy and Like a Puma and, uh, all the other uh, cadets are going through takes a long ass time, like a couple of years apparently. Because not only, like you said, uh, motherfucker, uh, not only do the dogs, uh, have enough time to become adults, you know, grow from little puppies to, um, uh, fully uh, developed uh, adult uh, dogs, but also Colin Firth uh, has enough time to grow out a beard and look like a rock star. Awesome! But then he shaves it off. God damn it! When he wakes up. So now that uh, Colin Firth is all cleaned up and ready to go, um, now that he's all cleaned up, uh, it's time to go spying again. But you, but 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 you know, you you, you know, uh, the cadets have to keep uh, practicing. Uh, the next challenge for this reality show that does not exist because I'm just making it up because this is kind of like a reality show is for them to um all uh deplete uh, 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 sorry uh, uh, the, the next challenge is for them to all jump from a freaking airplane and um and uh, fall to the ground to their death yay no just kidding oh no, the actual challenge is to make sure they don't fall to the great death when they uh, fall from the airplane. Because the challenge is that uh, one of them do not have a uh, parachute. Yes. So that means that um, that uh, that uh, that they all have to figure out a way for um, for them to uh, for them to all um, survive, even though one of them uh, might die because they don't have a parachute, and one of them is a pussy. He's like, screw this! I'm just gonna go ahead and and uh, and activate my parachute. Boom! Fuck you, all, suckers! So um, so the remaining five. Have, must figure out a way to, um, you know, to save whoever doesn't have it. So what they, so what they do is they all get into a little circle. They, they all get into a closed circle, and um, 
and they deplete their their uh, parachutes one by one, so that and, and they all hold hands, so and they're all close to each other because um, because because whoever doesn't because because that means that uh, whoever doesn't have his parachute just has to uh, you know grab the hand of one of their others, and it just so happens that uh, Roxy, you know the one girl of the group, the the uh, token girl, the female, um, she is afraid of heights. Oh great, freaking. Uh, Freaking foreshadowing. Yeah, usually when a character um, talks about how they really are scared of something at the beginning of a movie, yeah, that means that that fear is going to come into play later. No, duh. So anyway, um, so so uh, so, so so it comes down to just Roxy and Eggsy. Oh, oh, what a surprise! It's the two leading uh, characters of the movie. And and uh, and so uh, and so Roxy depletes her uh, her airbags. Uh, so d have I been saying airbag this whole time? I meant parachutes. She depletes hers and she grabs hold of uh, of uh, of of Eggsy, and they both safely make it down to the ground. So yes, they're they're all safe. But then uh, uh, Eggsy gives shit to uh to um. Eggsy gives shit to uh, Mark Strong because oh oh why didn't you give me a, a, a parachute huh why didn't you give me a parachute am, am I disposable am I disposable and Mark Strong is like hey asshole you had a parachute all along it was just a part of the challenge it was just to make you think that one of you didn't have a parachute to so, to so take that asshole oh by the way that that's something you should remember uh, by the way is that you think that this um. You believe that this uh, that this organization is very uh, soulless and um, harsh; that they're willing to kill their cadets. But it turns out, no, no, they they, they take precautions. It's it's all about it's all about um, it's all about uh, uh, getting them ready for those kinds of situations without actually putting them in the situation. You know, they have to be ready for uh, deathly situations, but at the same time, don't actually put them in those deathly situations. Just Make them think that they're in the deathly situations. You, you know what I mean, um, uh, motherfucker? No, I don't. Because I've already been in death, deathly situations. And they suck. Well, well, shouldn't you be already in deathly situations make you respect this more? Shut up, let's just keep going with the movie. Okay. So now we're down to three contestants. Oh! Yes. Uh, we're down to, um, Eggsy... Rexy and that uh, forgettable bully kid who I forgot the name of. Who cares about him anyway? True, that's why I forgot his name. So anyway, now they're a challenge, um, you know, um, to, uh, you know, take the uh, three down to two is to um, interrogate this this uh, lady at this at this party, you know, get information from her. So the three, you know, go there and, you know, um, and, you know, they try to seduce her and whatnot, or at least the two boys do, um, I think the girl is just, you know, just being a friend and whatnot, but then they all get, um, they all get kidnapped by this mysterious man, oh, and, and this mysterious man, um, causes all of them to, uh, pass out because he spiked their drinks, oh no, he's gonna rape them, wait, 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 who are you to, who, who are you to, to, to say oh no to that, since you know the comic books? That, that's just my comic book version. In the, in the live action film versions, I'm not like that. I don't do that. Well, you tried to, but, but, but your dick wasn't hard, so you didn't. Let's not talk about my past, okay? I was young, I was stupid. This was just a year ago. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Let's pretend that didn't happen. If I pretend that that didn't happen, I'd be no better than all of those colleges. Shut up! So, uh, you just remember that you, that I'm put that I have a um, taser, okay? I'm not like those colleges, uh, motherfucker. I'm not like the colleges who just ignore rape, okay? If you do something um, that I think even a little bit is a little suspicious, suspicious, I'm gonna tase your ass, and then I'm gonna take away all of your privileges, okay? All right, all of your extracurricular and scholar privileges, okay? You don't have that kind of power. Also, why do we have this conversation? I don't know why. Okay, so, um, back to the movie. Um, whew, that was a mouthful. Um, don't get any ideas, motherfucker. What the hell? 
So uh, back to the movie. Um, yes, uh, they wake up. Uh, um, Eggsy uh, wakes up, and he's and he's uh, tied to to a train track. Oh no! He's he he's about to get. Uh, he's about to get. Um, He's about to get uh, killed by a subway. He's about to get ran over by a subway and uh, by a train and and not a subway sandwich. Like five, five dollar, five dollar foot long. No, 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 not that kind of subway. An actual subway. He a train. He's about to get killed by a train unless he tells this mysterious villain man um the location of the Kingsman uh, organization. And and he doesn't. He only says fuck you to this guy. And guess what? It was all a test. Ah, uh, I thought we were actually going to kill this gasshole. Nope, it was just a test. And, uh, and, and Eggsy passed. He, they, they wanted to see if he actually would cave in and reveal his in information in the face of death. And he didn't. So that means that he passed the test and he's going into the final round. And so did Rexy. And what about that unforgettable, uh, what about that forgettable bully kid? Um, he doesn't. He, he, he fails. He, he reveals everything. So he, so he, so he, 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 he freaking fails. And, um, and so, uh, and so they leave him there. They, 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 they turn off the light and, and he's left to just untie himself. And, um, and, and that's that with that guy. Or is it? Shh, 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 shh. Don't don't reveal the, the um don't reveal the twist in this. It's not really much of a twist since there's not much to go after that. We will we, whatever. Um so we got so we got two potentials left. We've got um we've got Eggsy and we've got Roxy. And the final um test is to see if they can uh shoot their dogs. Yeah Wait a minute No I I don't approve of shooting dogs. Okay, I didn't even shoot the dog that I had a chance to kill in the kick-ass movie because I knew that I was really hated for doing it in the comic book, so I didn't in the movie. Yeah, but the question is, are these characters not willing to kill dogs? So, so, um, so, so Eggsy is, is forced by Michael King to, to kill his dog if he wants to pass the test. And, and he's looking at this little pug and the pug is looking back at him and I'm like, talk pug, talk. You're probably the pug from Men in Black, right? Talk so he, you can save your life. But no, Pete remains silent. Oh no, he's going to get shot by Roxy. And, and meanwhile, I mean, Eggsy and Roxy has to, by the way, the these characters have similar sounding names, I'm sorry. Um, Regsy might kill the pug and Roxy might kill the poodle. Oh no, don't kill the poodle and the pug and the poor pug and the poodle. And no, no, uh, Eggsy does not kill the, the pug. Yeah, but Roxy kills the poodle and she passes. Yeah, she passes, even though we don't see the poodle getting shot. Which, by the way, is a spoiler for what happens later. You shut up. So, um, so because he didn't uh, shoot the uh, shoot the pug, um, uh, uh, Eggsy is kicked the fuck out. He, he is forced to leave. He, he 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 he. So he so he leaves via random taxi with his pug. Hey, at least he got a free dog out of it. You, you know, at least there's that. It's a perk. Like like sorry, um, sorry, Eggsy, you didn't get to be in the Kingsman, but at least you got a free dog. Um, but no, he goes back and and he has to deal with his with his. Uh, uh, asshole of a father who uh, you know who, who's continuing to beat him and but then but then um but then uh but then good old Colin Firth is back and Colin Firth uh takes him back to his house and Colin Firth uh tells him listen Eggsy um I know you think that we're cold cold heartless bastards like this movie um advertised but we're not okay and and this is when he reveals you know that thing that I mentioned earlier that that uh lady who died in the flood scene uh turned out not actually to die she she was just an actor she was acting she's an actor yeah I can't believe they pussied out with that. Ugh. Well, what do you mean they pussied out? That means they're still good people. It's like, sure, they do bad things, you know, like stabbing people and killing assholes and whatnot, but they still but they still aren't cold, heartless bastards, you know? Like, they only pretend 
uh, to, to kill that lady in the flood scene. And they only pretended to uh, not give one of them um, uh, a, uh, a payer shoot. And uh, they only pretended that if they uh, shot their dogs, the dog would actually die. It turned out to be a blank. Yes, the dogs actually wouldn't die because the, 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 the guns they were given to shoot the dogs were blanks. And yet, Eggsy still didn't pass. Good, he shouldn't be a part of the cakes, man. Well, um... Well, now is the part where, um, where, uh, where, uh, Colin first has to go and now deal with, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, though. And so, Samuel L. Jackson is, um, is hiding, apparently, in Kentucky, uh, Kentucky, and so, um, and so, uh, Colin first, uh, goes there, and he goes to this little church, um, where they, uh, where apparently it's the most stereotypical of possible possibly stereotypical, um, uh, you know, Christian fanatics you could possibly find who are, like, blaming all of the recent, um, you know, uh, unfortunate events of the world on, you know, oh, it's the Jews, and it's the, and it's the gays, and it's the N-words. Uh, that's okay if you say it. No, no, I, 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 I'm gonna sit that one out. Oh, come on, say it. Well, why don't you say it? No. So, well, well there you go. So anyway, um, so yeah, um, I, I, I'm guessing it's supposed to be a, uh, commentary on the West, ba West uh, Boro Baptist Church, and I'm like, you know, not all Christians are like that, but yep, some of them are, and they're assholes, so yeah, screw them, so, so I'm actually happy that, uh, this is the part of the film where, um, this is the, uh, experimental location where, um, where, uh, Samuel L. Jackson decides to experiment his, uh, new product. Yes, um, earlier in the movie, he, um, he so he, uh, gave everybody a, a, a little chip, a, um, a, a, he, 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 um, he, uh, mass marketed a free chip for everyone to use, and it would be like free telephone and, uh, you know, free, uh, free tele, uh, free, free cell phone reception and, uh, free internet for life. And so everyone gets it, and I'm like, dude, dumbasses, don't you know that's obviously evil? Ooh. So, I, I think the reason why he didn't get, um, anyone, um, uh, arresting him is because he apparently he's in the cahoots with everybody. Yeah, he apparently has everyone on his side. He's put in that little chip that he put on uh, old Luke Skywalker on everyone. He's got it on prime ministers. He's got it on 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 um. He he he's got it on world leaders, and he's also got one on the president. Oh no, Barack Obama! Well, we don't see his face. Yeah, but we know that's Barack Obama. Hey, Barack. So anyway, um. So yes, um, but apparently the whole point of those chips is that they give off waves, they give off mental waves, uh, sonic waves, that uh, cause everyone, uh, that causes uh, complete and utter aggression for whoever is exposed to the waves. And he, and he experiments this at this church, you know, this Westboro pa Baptist church that uh, Colin Firth is uh, at because he's looking for, uh, you know, Samuel L. Daxon. And um, he's affected by it along with everyone else in the church. And right as uh, this old lady is, is damning him for being, a, um, for being a Jew who has a black boyfriend who are about to get an abortion, um, uh, Colin Firth kills her. Yay! He kills this. Oh, old lady who's a crazy West Baptist church lady um, and, and then everybody tries to kill each other and then what follows is this really 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 awesome scene where Colin Firth is trying to beat the ass of everybody because he is also affected by the waves and you know and 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 and, and, and it's to the song free bird yes free bird that's the song I want to listen to if I'm gonna kill a whole bunch of people not that I would Oh, you what? You're a super villain. Well, you are too. Oh, yeah. So anyway, um, so, so yeah, Colin Firth is killing everybody. He's killing, he's stabbing everyone, stabbing everybody. And eventually, he kills every single one of them. Yes, every single one. And he saves that uh, crazy old pastor guy for last, impales him through the head. And there you go. Whoa. So yes, um, they're all dead. 
Hooray! Hey, they were they they just thought that what they believed in was good, okay? They were just fighting for what they were believed in. Well they weren't fighting for what they believed in because they were just fighting because of the um sonic brain waves. But 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 hey, don't blame them for being stupid. Actually, yes, do blame them for being stupid. But anyway, um just to, just to clarify, I think this is just the movie making fun of Westboro Baptist Church people. The, cra the extra crazy church fanatic uh, people. Not all Christians. Not all Christians. Because because there's a lot of really cool Christians that are awesome and, 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 and fun. You know, they're, 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 they're okay with, this, with the gay people. And they're okay with the um, abortions, I guess. And they're okay with the black... Well, of course they'd be okay with the black uh, people. Like, if someone's a Christian Christian is racist. I'm pretty sure it's. I'm pretty sure they're not a racist because they're Christian. It's just because they're stupid. But anyway, um, but now that they are all dead, uh, not all Christians, just those specific um asshole Christians. Now that they're uh, dead, um, uh, Colin Farrell um is uh, is no longer affected by the brain waves, and he uh, walks out of the church and meets Samuel L. Jackson, and and Samuel um uh, 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 reveals to him the uh he uh that um that he's been behind this whole thing er before because earlier in the film uh he had a meeting with uh, Samuel L. Jackson. And uh, they had a uh, dinner uh, over McDonald's. Ah, oh, product placement. Well, I think it was like a, I think it was a tongue-in-cheek product placement. You know, like the, li like the Wayne's World guys did. So anyway, um, so Samuel Jacks uh, throughout the movie, by the way, uh, it seems like they're very aware of the fact that this is like. Uh, James Bond movies, and they mention it like, "Hey, isn't this is like a James Bond movie? You know, like you're like James Bond, and I'm like the villain, me, Samuel L. Jackson." But um, this would be the part of the movie where I, Samuel L. Jackson, would uh, review my plan to you. But instead, I'm just gonna shoot you. <laughs> oh no, Colin Firth is killed. Oh no, he's killed. And Samuel L. Jackson didn't like seeing that because you know he has this character quirk that he doesn't like to see violence even though he's a math mass murderer which is ironic uh solid a mile away wait what do you mean you saw calvin Firth's death a mile away well this is directed by the guy who did kick ass and it's written by the guy who did kick ass and guess what they always kill the mentor type character in that oh yeah they did they killed Big Daddy in um. They killed Big Daddy in the first Kick-Ass movie, and then the um. And then the guy played by Jim Carrey uh, was killed in the second uh, Kick-Ass movie. I, I, I get what you're saying. I guess that's a valid criticism. Uh, the, he is kind of getting kind of predictable in that um. Always killing off the same type of the uh the uh. He always kills the uh mint the old mentor um archetype, um. Uh, he always kills that character off for some reason. And uh, maybe he's ripping off of Star Wars. Now, 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 hold on, now hold on. You know, a lot of a lot of movies kill off that kind of character. You know, the mentor archetype character. But yes, um, very sad. Colin vs. Dead. And every, and every single w one of them saw it, too. Uh, 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 all of the Kingsmen saw it. Um... Uh, uh, Mark Strong saw it. Uh, 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 Michael Caine saw it, and and uh, and Eggsy saw it. So yes, um, Eggsy goes over to Michael Caine to mourn over the loss. But then uh, Eggsy notices that Michael Caine has this scar under his ear. Oh, just like all of the people who work for for uh, for Samuel L. Jackson. And you know what that means. He has to kill Michael Caine. He has to kill Michael Caine. So, um, so he freaking kills Michael Caine, and, um, and he takes out the chip, and with the help of Mark Strong and, um, and, uh, Roxy, they go to, they, they find out the, uh, secret base where, uh, where Samuel L. Jackson is hiding, which is up in the, up in the, um, I don't know, somewhere in the Arctic or Antarctic. I don't know. I don't pay attention to locations. By the way, is this seriously all we have left? Just, just Mark Strong and two kids? Um, well, first of all, they're not kids. They're old enough to drink, so they're young adults. But, but yes, uh, this is all we have of the Kingsmen left. 
just Mark Strong and a bunch of kids. But what about those holograms from earlier? Well, they're probably too busy doing other things. You know, you know, the hipster holograms. Because apparently, when you're in the Kingsman, you have to wear hipster glasses. And that's what, and that's what, um, that's what Eggsy has to do. Because he has to, he has to, um, continue the hipster legacy that was started by Colin Firth by adopting his hipster glasses. So, um, now with the hipster glasses, um, Eggsy must embody, um, Colin Firth by wearing his same clothes and be like a, a young Colin Firth. Hey, I'm young Colin Firth! And he, um, disguises himself as one of the snooty rich people, um, oh, uh, to be, um, to be let into the Arctic, where, um, where Samuel L. Jackson has, um, has, has abducted abducted all of the important people, yes, all of the extra important people that he believes are, that should be safe from this eradication he's about to do, yes. Uh, Sam Samuel L. L. Jackson's plan is to, um, basically, he's, he, he mentions it in his, uh, to these, um, party guests in his toast, you know, he declares a toast, and he mentions to them, like, okay, um, I'm going to, uh, cause a flood, uh, a metaphorical flood, it's not actually a flood, it's more like a bunch of uh, brain waves that cause people to, um, you know, uh, beat each other since this to the point where everyone's dead, but I'm gonna keep you guys safe from all of that! Yay! And all the snooty people were like, oh, ho, ho, yes, oh, we're rich and snooty, yes. But, uh, certain, certain important people, um, don't agree to this, and that's why they're kept in the, um, in, like, a dog pound somewhere, uh, like this uh, princess lady, and the reason why I mentioned this princess lady is because she's kind of important later. No, well, not really important, but yeah, it is wor worth bringing up. So, um, so yes, so, um, so, uh, Eggsy, disguised as, uh, young Colin Firth, is, um, is, a uh, is, um, is, uh, is able to uh, disguise himself as one of the rich snooty people and is um and is let in to the party you know this party that's going to be safe from you know basically the apocalypse uh, everybody beating themselves to the point where everyone's dead and um and uh, he goes there and um he is spotted by that bully kid from earlier <gasps> Wait, wait, which bully kid? The one from the poor people place or the, or the one from the Secret Service place? Uh, the one that was trying to try out for being uh, one of the Kingsmen. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yes, he, he, he has spotted him. Oh my gosh, what a plot twist. Are they going to, uh, are they going to go further with this? Nope. Nope, they don't do anything with that. He just shows up. Oh, by the way, I'm one of the evil ones. And then that's it. We never see him again. Yeah, that was weird. That that that, that plus twist went nowhere. So anyway, uh, now um, Eggsy is uh, chased out of this um, special uh, cave. You know, the protection cave where everyone is going to be protected from this flat out um, worldwide beatdown. But um, but uh, what during this, um, uh, 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 Roxy was uh, has the uh, mission of um, of uh, of of letting uh, as she's being uh, hoisted by two giant balloons that look like uh, upside down testicles that are going up to the um, to to the uh, to, to to the ozone layer, and um, it, it, once she gets up high enough, she will have to uh, aim a bunch of missiles, a couple of missiles, at uh, one of the satellites that are, are causing these brain waves. You know that, that are going to make people kill each other, and if she kills that one, uh, uh, d d d then there then there will be no. Then that means that um, if you kill one of the satellites, um, none of the other satellites will work and and she shoots it and now she has to parachute back down see what i meant it was foreshadowing she's the one who's afraid of heights and naturally that the that means that the plot needs her to be the one to do this mission well yeah but it means that it's her it's her facing her fears yeah but that's pretty much the only story arc we really get to her get from her because she's not really a love interest for Exy as we see later 
Yeah, but you know what? It's nice to have a strong female character, even though she's not a love interest for um Eggsy, as we revealed earlier. But I wish she was a love interest. I mean, I think they got a lot of chemistry. But anyway, um, let's save that for later. Anyway, so um, she so she destroys uh one of these satellites. But 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 uh, Samuel Jackson is uh, calls up um the one of the companies who own uh, another satellite, and it's like, hey, can I use your satellite? Your satellite. I need it for my uh, evil uh, villain plan. So they um so they uh, bring one of the satellites into the program, and that means that the um that the uh, that the that the um that that means that the uh oh no that means that the um. Oh, oh, why can't I say things? That means that the um that when once that satellite is in the orbit of all the other satellites, that means that Samuel Jackson can activate his plans again. Oh no! But at least they just they um uh, activate something. Yes. Uh, during all this, uh, Mark Strong is hiding in the aeroplane that uh, brought Eggsy there, and he um activates uh, all the chips that are being worn by every single one of the per people that are in cahoots with um, Samuel Jackson. Because apparently, whenever someone uh, agrees to be part of Samuel Jackson's plans, um, they have to have chips in their brain. So um, he, act so he um, activates all of the chips, and Mark Strong is able to make every single one of them explode! Yes, explode! Right before... Um, Right before uh, the henchmen of uh, Samuel Jackson are about to shoot him with missiles, so he so he activates the switch, and every every single one of Samuel ja Samuel Jackson's henchmen explode. All of their heads explode like fireworks. This man's head explode. That man's head explode. These people's heads explode. And guess what? Not only does his henchmen explode, everyone at the party explodes. Every single one who agreed to um who. Tried Trusted Samuel Jackson, all of their heads explode, or every single one of the rich, snooty people's head explodes. Hooray! Yeah, if you're a poor person, you're probably happy about that. But that doesn't stop there. Apparently, every single um, world leader was in cahoots with Samuel Jackson, so all of their heads explode. And you know what that means? Barack Obama's heads explode. Yes, they explode. Barack Obama. He Barack Obama's head explodes. I mean, you don't see see his face still, but yep, you just saw your president explode. There you go. Are you happy, North Korea? Are you happy? You you were all pissed because we had a movie about your world about your leader that um whose head exploded, you know, like, oh, why did you have to have Kim Jong-un explode in your movie? Well, well, are you happy now? Now we made our own president explode. Well, it was actually the United Kingdom that had our ex president explode. It's the same difference. The point is, yes, we're even North Korea. Your world, your leader exploded, and now our leader exploded. Can you move on now? C c can you move on and put this all behind us? I guess so, since they released the interview, and we're not all dead yet. So yeah, I guess that did happen. So anyway, um, so yes, uh, Barack Obama is dead, and um, uh, they don't address that. But 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 uh, but, but I, I guess because British people don't care about Barack Obama, I guess I, I don't know. Um, so um, but 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 here's the thing. Um, J Samuel Jackson didn't do it himself because he's not a dummy. So he so he um activates the um satellite. Um, uh, Roxy is back on Earth. Uh, she faced she she faced her fears, and now her story arc is over. Now all that's left for her to do is to just be in the snow and um warn uh Eggsy's uh, mother to uh keep. Uh, keep his baby sister um, in the bathroom and uh, lock it because um, because Eggsy's mother is about to go all psycho because of the brain waves and so the brain waves start and now everybody is hitting everybody everybody is beating everybody senseless across the world Britain uh, the cars double decker buses are running over people there's 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 mass hysteria in the streets. Pugs and poodles living together, mass hysteria. Um, you know what's weird is that they showed uh uh Exe's best friends uh when they were about to get infected, 
but you never see what happened to them. Yeah, I guess they died. So anyway, yes, um, it, it, it's happening. The apocalypse is happening. Everybody is trying to kill everybody. They cut to Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Everyone is killing each other there. Well, uh, not killing, just... Just a fist of cuffs. Everyone is wrestling. There's people in bikinis. Babies in... Uh, sorry, not babies. Babes in bikinis. Chicks in bikinis. Men in bikinis. Killing each other or beating each other in bikinis. Oh, God. Oh, it's it's erotic, but still it's fucked up. That's probably what they're saying about Fifty Straight Shades of Grey right now. Uh, you'd be surprised with that. By the way, we're not going to review which Fifty Shades of Grey. So anyway, yes, everybody is beating each other. But then, um, and, and the only way for, uh, for, um, Eggsy to stop Samuel Jackson is, is if he gets, um, Samuel Jackson's hand off of the keypad that's activating all of this. So, um, first he has to go through, um, he, he has to go through the evil knife lady, and he does, we, because she's not the only one who has, um, knife feet. He also has knives in his shoe. So he stabs her with her, uh, with his knife shoe, and I, I guess knife shoe beats knife foot because she dies. It's because she had a poison. Yeah, I forgot they had this whole scene where they were um getting together their uh, weapons and whatnot, and um and they foreshadowed all of that. But I forgot to mention that because reasons. So yes, yeah, she's dead. So now um. Uh, so now, uh, Eggsy has to, uh, s defeat, um, uh, Samuel Jackson, but he doesn't have enough time. Oh no, his mother is about to kill her, the baby, even though he doesn't know that. But luckily in the nick of time, um, the, uh, Eggsy grabs, uh, one of the knife feet from the evil, uh, dead knife foot lady and throws it at Samuel Jackson. He impales Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jefferson falls to it, to the ground, to his death. And, 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 and the, all of the, uh, satellites giving off the, the, the waves are, are, are deactivated. Everyone is not killing each other anymore. They're all stopped. They're like, hey, what the fuck just happened? Um, we, we, well, we don't really see the reactions to that. Yeah, this movie leaves a lot out in the, in the, uh, epilogue. But anyway, um, so yes, um, all is, all is, is done. Uh, every, uh, all the bad guys are defeated. Mark Strong survived. Roxy survived. And she's jumping for joy, even though she didn't get to be the love interest. And, um, and, uh, and, uh, and, and Eggsy gets to celebrate, by uh, giving anal sex to that princess I mentioned earlier. Wait, what? Yes, um, apparently, I th okay, here's my reasoning for this. Um, I mean, I mean, I know it sounds weird, me giving a good reason for anal sex, but hear me out, okay? This movie is meant to be an, a more adult version of, um, of James Bond. It, it's like, hey, it's like a love letter. It's like a love letter to James Bond, but at the same time, it's also like, hey, what if James Bond like upped the ante to? Um, what if James Bond was the thing that it really wanted to be but couldn't? And um, you, 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 you know, you know, like, um, like, like, uh, so, so they wanted to up the R-rated ante on everything that regards James Bond, and that doesn't just mean the action. That doesn't just mean upping the violence. That also means upping up. That means upping everything, uh, every aspect of James Bond. And guess what uh, other aspect of James Bond is there besides the action, if you know what I mean? Ah, uh, the sex with women. Yes, so they gotta up everything regarding James Bond to an R-rated level. Even the sex. So guess what? Eggsy gets to give anal sex to the princess. Yay! I wish that's the way every Disney princess ended. Disney princess movie ended. Wait, what? Hey, at least we saw her butt. Yeah, and we didn't see his penis. Although one would say that's sexism, but whatever. Anyway, um, anyway, um, so, um, so, uh, Mark Strong doesn't want to see that. I understand Mark Strong. You know, it's an acquired taste, but, but anyway, so yes, so they cut to, um, so, so that's the movie, everybody. There's the title sequence and whatnot. That's a weird way to end. 
Yeah, but but then it turns out it's not over because then they cut to um because apparently there's there's a mid credit sequence where um where where all the boardies at the at the bar because apparently um the guy who beats um the guy who beats uh Eggsy is in cahoots with the guy who with the other guy who beats Eggsy, you know, the uh bar bullies, which is weird. But um yes. So um so so uh so um uh, so Eggsy comes back to the bar and he's all spiffied up, you know, he's trying to embody um Colin Firth, you know, trying to uh keep the spirit of the hipster alive and keep the legacy the, the hipster legacy going. But then, um, but then, um, and, and he tells his mother, like, hey, mom, uh, come live with me at that, um, at that, uh, at, at that, uh, mansion, you know, because Michael Caine isn't owning that mansion anymore, because he turned out to be evil and dead, and, and the, uh, father's like, I'm gonna beat you again, and, and then, and then, um, Eggsy is like, well, guess what, I'm gonna reenact that same scene that Colin Firth had earlier with you guys, but you audience members won't get won't get to see it because the movie is over now so credits roll credits the end that's it movie done Ooh, oh man that was a ride wasn't it i didn't like the ride what why didn't you like the ride um motherfucker how come i'll tell you why because i don't like being raised by these people okay i don't like my boss a uh, stupid um of Matthew Vaughn or Mark Millar. I don't like them. I want to move on. I want to do other projects. So I'm giving this movie a bad review. That's by, but that's biased, motherfucker. I thought you were higher than that. Well, I'm not. Uh -huh. Well, it's too bad that your biasness um, keeps you from loving this movie because I enjoyed it. If you want, if you're the kind of person who wished that James Bond was more of the kooky, extra kooky, um, weird, um, out there, uh, outlandish, um, um, non-grounded uh, type of movies that James Bond used to be, but not anymore because now it's all serious and dark and whatnot. This movie's for you. This movie is the kind of classic kooky, weird, campy James Bond, uh, James Bond used to be. And they even addressed that in the movie. Like, Samuel Jackson is like, yeah, um, the, 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 the spy movies are all dark and serious now. I prefer the kooky stuff because this movie is exactly that. And they even have, um, J um, Samuel Jackson's final words be like, hey, hey, I'm about to die. Like a villain is about to die. Say a pun to me. Say a pun Good, you said a pun, now I can die. That's even how he dies. He wants to die in the same supervillain cliche we always see in James Bond films from the classic ones. So this, I believe that this film is for your James Bond lover. Just remember that the film is also, um, it's not just embodying what James Bond used to be. It's also embodying what James Bond could be if it was rated R. And that means a whole bunch of violence, cutting people, impaling people, slicing off body parts, blood, blood, blood everywhere, and um, even, uh, so yeah, um, so I just realized something, oh my gosh, my mind is blown, um, Samuel Jackson embodies the kind of viewer who uh, likes James Bond movies, but doesn't like the violence, but he's still open to the movie, that's exciting, oh my gosh, my mind is blown, but whatever. Yes, so um, the movie has all of the violence of blood and also butt sex. Um, well, they don't show the butt sex, but they do show a butt. But anyway, so that's the film, everybody. Um, I liked it. It's a love letter to the classic James Bond movies, at the same time being crazy R-rated fun. So um, so let's rate the movie. Um, uh, let's see here. Would you rather uh, watch this movie... Or, um, get your limbs, uh, uh, cut off and replaced by, uh, weapons. Oh, wait a minute, you already did that. Yeah, I already had my limbs bitten off by a shark. So why the fuck would I, w would want to watch this movie than that? In fact, you know what? I would prefer if I regrew limbs and then had them bitten off by a shark again. Just so I wouldn't have to watch this movie. Because I don't like being reminded of my past. Well, I, on the other hand, will not let biasness get in the way of enjoying this movie, okay? I would prefer watching this movie than getting my um, arms and legs cut off. 
Oh, sorry for being insensitive, by the way, uh, motherfucker. I know that you actually have gotten your legs cut off for real and, and your arms. But, but anyway, uh, the movie is a blast. Um, really great and uh, fantastic. And um, so uh, see you guys next time where I review, um, where I review um, Chateau Copley being turned into Johnny Five, a.k.a. Wally. So, uh, see you then, everybody, next month. So there is seriously nothing you liked in the movie. Well, I guess I like that girl with the, with the, um, with the, with the, uh, sword feet, because, uh, that's kind of what I always wanted. You know, I don't like these boring, um, prosthetics that don't do anything. They're just regular prosthetics. Why can't they be sword feet like hers? Well, maybe, if you weren't such a douchebag, um, you would have more opportunities, motherfucker, instead of, like, letting your bias, uh, keep you from enjoying things. Well, you shut up, okay? I'm going through a very difficult time, okay? Both of my parents are dead, and one of them is in this, um, spy movie while I'm not. Oh, I get it. You're jealous of your father for being in the Kingsman movie. Well, you're not. I see it now. This is all about jealousy. Oh my god, you're right!